الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه واسواده وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى في مقام اخر ان الدين عند الله الاسلام وقال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه مخبرا وامرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم وصل عليه my respected elders brothers sisters and listeners of radio dawn and my dear children assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had many wonderful characteristics and great qualities and amongst those beautiful characteristics and qualities of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that he was a great teacher He was a wonderful teacher and his method of teaching was simple and very effective and of course he was bestowed and given the gift of having very wonderful eloquent tongue what is known as jawami al kalim in other words in few words he could express deep thoughts and ideas and convince people and i think there was something else very special about the people around him the sahaba radhwanallahu alaihim ajma'in they too were great listeners he himself was a great listener such a great listener that some of the munafiqs rudely and and, and sarcastically used to say that muhammad huwa udhun he is just ears he is just he just listens to anything and anything anybody says to him he just listens he pays attention to it and it appears as though he believes us so this was one of you know there was being sarcastic about him and said that he is uzun and the quran actually defended the prophet and said no no muhammad rasulullah says is very discerning yes he listens to you he knows the truth okay don't think you can fool him I was talking about how the sahaba were great wonderful listeners as well and that is why they absorbed and understood and then were able to transmit his teachings and this is one of a great skill listening is a great skill and in fact it's a skill of those who are perhaps the brightest and the most intelligent people anyway really you know if you look around you we have so much advice and information and knowledge and teachings and preachings around us day in and day out possibly as much as about 3000 messages you get in a day how many how many of them do you remember or pay attention to 3000 after 3000 you think well you are very bright brother i would be very surprised if anybody actually remember three things okay i would be very good you know, if you did that it just shows how little attention we pay you know things you know they say coming from one ear and go straight out you know they never have the time to be absorbed by our brain and then be regurgitated and reflected upon by our brains and our minds we never it never goes that far anyway and that is the failure really the quran talks about people who listen wa idha samu ma unzila ila rasul ترى اعينهم تفيض من الدمع مما عرف من الحق ومحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم you will see those people who when they listen to you what is revealed to you you see that their eyes are full of tears because they listen they listen with their ears okay and they listen attentively so brothers and my children in particular you know I'd like you to become good listeners You know, and that is what's going to really make you successful. If you listen, if you listen, you will learn, and 
and it means paying full attention. And one of the descriptions of the Sahaba in Hadith is that when they used to be in the company of Rasulullah one of the disciples describes them as though you know they were like statues, and even birds could sit on sit on their heads. They would be so still. You know, they would be still for so long that the birds would think that these are statues, you know, dry wood, okay? So they would, you know, be listening very carefully, attentively. And that's a great quality, you know, listening. But I was talking about, about Rasulullah being a great teacher. And last week I talked to you about another great teacher, Lukma, the wise, which, who was giving advice and teaching his own son. And when he was teaching his son, he said to him, Luqman is teaching his son, he's preaching to him and he's teaching him really, he's teaching him. And he says to him, shirk is big, biggest crime. And then the next thing he teaches him is that, look, you've got to believe in Allah. That is his next message about believing in Allah and knowing that Allah sees and hears and is fully aware of everything that I do. Okay? And this really is, was crucial and important to believe that God is seeing me. Okay? Children, can I have your attention as well? Okay? Because I've got something very special for you. This khutbah is going to help you inshallah as well. Okay? And I've chosen in order to bring out this good teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for you I've chosen a very beautiful hadith, famous hadith of hadith of Jibreel. And in this you will see how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is teaching the deen of Islam to his disciples. The hadith goes like this. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu narrates that one day we were sitting in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the Masjid al-Nabwi. And a man came a man came who was wearing very brilliant white clothes and his hair was black and shiny. There was no sign of any fatigue or as though he had come from a journey. He walked straight to the Prophet and none of us recognized who he was. He sat right in front of the Prophet facing him and put his two hands on his own thighs and sat before Rasulullah very humbly. And then he asked a question. He said there are versions of how he addressed the Prophet. But after saying the salam, he asked the Prophet. Mal Iman. So he asks, Mal Islam, what is Islam? And the Prophet tells him, he says to him that Islam is that you believe in God and you believe that Muhammad is the messenger of God. That you establish the prayers, you give zakat, you fast in the month of Ramadan and you perform your hajj, if you can afford that. And the man said, Sadaqta, you have spoken the truth. Umar says, we were bewildered and surprised that he asks the question and he himself confirms it as though he already knew the answer. If he knew the answer, why was he asking the question? Okay. So we were surprised, you know, we were already surprised because one, this man was a stranger, nobody recognized him. He looked so fresh and bright, yet, you know, where had he come from? It was all very surprising and a big enigma for us. And then he asks again, Mal Iman, Ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of God, Akhbir me al Iman. Tell us what Iman is. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says to him, Iman is that you believe that there is one God. You believe in the prophets of God, in his books. You believe in the taqdeer, in predestination, in taqdeer, that all good and bad is from evil. And you believe in life after death. And then he said, Sadaqta. Ya Rasulullah, you have spoken the truth. Again, Umar says, we were just surprised. You know, this man is asking and he himself is confirming. And then he goes on and asks the third question. Mal ihsan, Ya Rasulullah. What is ihsan, Ya Rasulullah? What is excellence? What is the meaning of excellence? And the Prophet says to him, 
تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. As you worship God, as though you are seeing Him. If you can't see God, then remember that He is watching you. Again, he said, Salatka, he was spoken the truth. And then he asked, what are the, when is the day of judgment coming? When is the day of judgment coming? And the Rasul says, I, I know, I do not know more than what you know about it. Okay, the Prophet says, I don't know more than you know about it. Okay? And then he says, well, tell me, what are the signs of the day of judgment? And Rasulullah says to him, the signs are that the maid will give birth to her master, and then those who were, who were barefooted, those who were very poor, and those who were naked, and those who were shepherds will be living in very, very tall buildings. And then, after that, the man walked away. Again, the way he came in surprisingly, he left in a surprising, in the enigmatic way, he just left. And then Rasulullah Umar says, looked at me and said, Hey, Umar, you know who that was? That was Jibreel. He had come to teach you the deen of Islam. My children, here is a very beautiful description of what our deen is all about. In, 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 in a very nutshell, this is what it is. The Prophet ﷺ is teaching us what is Islam, what is Iman, and what is Ihsan. Three very important components of our deen. This is what Islam is really made up of. <coughs> now reflect on this. He says that Islam is having five pillars. Okay, those are the five pillars of Islam he describes. He says this is what Islam is. It is to have faith, it is to pray regularly, it is to give zakat and fast and to do the hajj. And of course, you know, these are the outward practices of Islam. And Iman actually is as, you know, we know, ikrarun bil lisani wa tasdeekun bil qal. Iman is actually to pronounce with our tongues and to confirm with our hearts. It is to believe La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Okay? That is Iman. You, know, you accept it with your heart and mind. You, know, you believe in that. There's no doubt left in it. And you pronounce it. You are confident to tell others that I believe in this. This is my vision. This is my way of looking at the world. This is what I believe that there is God. I am his slave. And there is Muhammad Rasulullah as my teacher and as my guide. And then he teaches him the five pillars. Okay, those are the five pillars. And then he makes a clarification of what Iman is. Okay, because it's really important to believe in the right thing. You know, if we had the wrong beliefs, you know, our way of life would be wrong. And that is why Iman is so important that we have that exact Iman that Muhammad Rasulullah taught. And that, that is why we don't go beyond those things. You know, Rasulullah said, you know, as, as mentioned in the Quran, that if Iman is that yu'minuna billah, that you believe in God, in his books, in his prophets, okay? You believe in that there is a life after death, and you believe in taqdeer. Now, taqdeer is a very interesting phenomenon, okay? And, and, and the meaning of taqdeer is very simple. This that God has programmed everything. God has measured everything in exact measure, all right? Taqdeer means, you know, qaddara yuqaddiru taqdeer, and in Arabic literally means to measure things, okay? And measure them accurately and precisely, okay? And it's just like programming, really. It's a very, the, the whole this concept of modern computers and programming is fascinating, but it helps us to overcome lots of ideas that, you know, or beliefs that we part in the past couldn't pro properly understand. We can now really understand them well. So, what it means is that Allah is the absolute programmer and designer, okay? And He knows precisely how to design things, and He knows precisely how things will work out as well. You know, a good program knows exactly what will be the outcome of its programs, isn't it? That's the whole point, you know? You ask 
you know, to have a program designed for you. All right? You program your robot to cross the road and you tell it exactly what you want it to do. How many steps it will take, which direction it will go, the speed you want it to do it, you know the outcomes exactly. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, it's even more precise and even more <coughs> accurate in all that. Okay? We can't actually make any comparisons with a, a modern software programmer with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's, Allah's way of programming is far more complex, far more accurate, and far more preci precise, and has a great precision than any programmer can do. But taqdeer is really something on those lines. So a lot of people get confused about it. Because, you know, the confusion shouldn't be there. You know, we as the uh, Khalifatullahs have actually been given responsibility. So people get confused that. Well, does this mean we have no choice? We are robots? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Okay? That is what distinguishes humanity. When Allah says, Inna aradna amanata ala samawati wa ardhajiba no, we gave this trust, this choice to only, the only people who, were, who took this choice and this willingness to have this were human beings. So we have that choice. We make a choice. Okay? Programming is something else. Taqdeer is something else. Okay? This is why one of the beautiful definitions by Allah Mawlana Ahmad Razak and Brailwi of Taqdeer is that, you know, this is the knowledge of God. God has the knowledge of what you are capable of doing. So it is the pre-knowledge of God. That is what taqdeer and predestination is. If anybody wants to read more about it, you should take my book, Aqaid al-Nasafi, which is the collection of our Islamic beliefs. It's a small book. And it's uh, about 900 years old, which I translated <coughs> about, uh, 15 years ago. It's a very beautiful book on what are the beliefs. So I really do urge everybody to have that Aqaid al-Nasafi and go through it, because that really is a, is a very beautiful, succinct, a summary of the Aqaid of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and Alhamdulillah, we Muslims are very fortunate. We do not differ in our Aqaid. You know that? 1.3 billion Muslims all over the world have exactly the same Aqaid because we be, our ulama have been very strict about keeping it to ourselves. Okay, that these Aqaid have, nobody has the right to interfere with them. So we have the Aqaid, they are set, very clearly set as well. Okay, so we don't differ about them. the differences you see and are really based on our inability to work together a lot of the time. And they are based on our immorality. We are immoral sometimes. We don't recognize the rights of others. We do not know how to work in partnership. We don't know how to share. We don't know how to uh, make sacrifices for the benefits of others. We are sometimes very greedy, mean, and we are selfish. And that is what leads to the ikhdila and conflict. It is not because of our beliefs. Okay? So Alhamdulillah, we share the, those beliefs with all the Muslims all over the world, share those same beliefs. Rasulullah says, this is what Iman is. And then he asks, what is Ihsan? What is excellence? Okay. The Quran keeps on talking about Ihsan again and again. It says that the believers are muhsineen, people who do Ihsan, who are excellent really. That's what it means, Ihsan. But you see, you want to say, well, what is this excellent person? What is this excellence all about? And Rasulullah looks at it in his own very special way, Muhammadi way, and he says, Ta'budullah ka'adna ta'am. I'll tell you what Ihsan is, what good person is, who worships his Lord as though he is seeing his Lord. Can you imagine that? Seeing the Lord, as though you are standing right in front of Allah, and having that feeling. And brothers, this is the state of Hazuri. This is what people would say, living in the moment. Okay? And this is a great art, and it's a very deep art, which we need to learn if you are to enjoy life and to benefit from, the, from all those you know, abundant neighbors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to enjoy those and truly benefit from them and be happy, we have to learn this art which Rasulullah is teaching you here. He says, live in the moment. Don't look towards the future. The future is what you make of it today. Okay? And the past is gone. You can't be craving for that, okay? And don't crave for the mustaqbil either then. Because once you do this, you live in the time and you do things properly, in the best way, and say, well, 
This moment is not going to come back again to me. What are you going to do? You're going to make sure that you enjoy and you do the best in that moment. Okay? You do, do it in the best way. And that is what, you know, you stand in front of God. You worship, he says, as though you are watching him. As though you are seeing him. And if you can't do that, well then at least remember that he is watching and observing you all the time. This is a great concept, you know, of Ihsan. Meaning that, you know, whatever we do, we've got to do it with 100% concentration. We've got to give our best, alright? And Ibadah, worship of God, requires that. But brothers, how poor we are at this a lot of the time. You know, we never do our worship in the way that it ought to be done. Why? Because we haven't learned it. And that is why it's so important for us, from our childhood, to learn to pray properly. Can I just ask you to please fill in the gaps in front of you? If you see a gap in front of you, just move, please. Come on, fill in those gaps in front of you, everybody. Yes, just fill in the gaps you see in front of you. Yeah, don't wait for others, just fill in those gaps. And all it will do is, inshallah, bring you closer. Alright? Not further. So don't, don't, yes, just fill in those gaps, please. And those who have come late, please sit down and listen to the khutbah. That is more important. You know, you are here, remember, we are here to enjoy the company of one another. Juma is about togetherness, assembly. You know, the best prayers are your tahajjud prayers in your homes. Okay? Those are the best prayers, you know, where you focus. So sit down and listen. This is time for listening, really. Not for doing nafals. Alright? This is why in khutbah, one of the adabs of khutbah is that you do not even point to others. You don't turn your head away from the khatib. Okay? And if somebody is doing something wrong, you don't tell them off. You focus. Okay? It is so important. You know what I started off with today? Listening. We need to become good listeners, brothers and sisters. You know, when we are good listeners, Alhamdulillah, we will enjoy what we are listening to. Otherwise, we won't. So Rasulullah is teaching what Islam is. And he says that this is Iman, this is Islam, and this is Ihsan. You know, Ihsan is to be excellent. And what a wonderful quality. You know, people strive to become excellent. And we know that, you know, the people who are excellent are people who have proper training, who worked hard, who know their craft, who know their whatever profession they're in. They're good at it. They do it best. And we are told that, you know, we all human beings have a great profession. We all have a great thing to do in our lives, don't we? We have to live a good life. What more than that? You know, we try to be good in our professions, whether we are shopkeepers, businessmen, whether we are doctors or we are lawyers or whether we are accountants or whether we work in a factory. But we forget that, you know, the whole life itself, the 24 hours, should all be lived in that state of ihsan, in that state of, don't you think so? This is what Rasulullah is teaching. You know, live this life like that. Finally, I, I, the, the fourth thing Jibreel asks is about the Day of Judgment. And here Rasulullah doesn't deny that I don't have knowledge of it. He says to him, look, now don't be clever, Jibreel. You know it and I know it. You know, that is, he says that the uh, Mosul knows as much as the Sile knows. That's a very beautiful way of saying, he's not saying I don't know about it. I do know as much as you do. Let's not talk about what he's saying to Jibreel. Let us talk about what is going to be useful to us. And what's going to be useful? What is going to be useful is to know the signs of it. And Rasulullah just tells two of the signs. One is that the maid will give birth to her master. This has many meanings. The ulama have translated this in a variety of ways. One which I like is where he says what it, it, it could mean this. That the children will be so disobedient that they will be masters of their mothers. And sadly, we see a lot of that these days. Children have become so disobedient. You know, and he says this is one of the signs of Akhir. And then he says that those who are barefoot, those who are naked, those who are shepherds, and those who are really poor will live in very, very tall buildings. Can I take you to Dubai? Dubai, 30 years ago, Mullah, they were absolute Badawis. You could describe them, they didn't have anything on their feet. And they were shepherds, 
they are the most poor people. Only 30 years ago, three decades. But today, Dubai boasts of having one of the tallest buildings in the world. You know, you know the Burj Al Dubai, the Tower of Dubai. They boast that it is the highest one in the world. Although they've been beaten by the Malaysians, I think. But still, you know, Subhanallah, this is the, the, the what Rasulullah is telling us. Of course, what he's telling us, be aware, okay? And you know, when we know that the day of judgment is near, what should we be doing for it? We should be preparing. We should be doing things, working harder to make sure that we live lives that are good lives, lives that are according to our theme. I've printed this out for you. This is a very beautiful uh, hadith of Jibreel. It embodies and it really summarizes the teaching of Islam. So do please take a copy of this and read it and reflect on it uh, afterwards. Wa akhru da'wana